The next item of business is a members' business debate on motion 5941 in the name of Jenny Gilruth on Leavenmouth Rail Link. And this debate will be concluded without any questions being put, so I would ask members who wish to speak in the debate to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Jenny Gilruth to open the debate. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, can I begin by welcoming to Holyrood this evening members from the Leave Mouth Rail Link campaign group, colleagues from Fife Council, and by thanking fellow members from across the political spectrum for their support on the re-establishment of the Leave Mouth Rail Link. So what is it, Presiding Officer, that makes Leaven different? Leaven Mouth is the largest urban conurbation in Scotland, not directly served by rail. The track is a distance of five miles in length, and it was still in use until 2001 as a freight line. Compare our line to the borders. 30 miles of new railway. In February 2013, the business case there showed a benefit cost ratio of just 0.5 to 1. The decision to build Borders Railway was branded exceedingly poor value for money by the Institute of Economic Affairs. And yet, during its first month, 125,971 passengers travelled on the Borders Railway. Demand far outstripped expectation with the line carrying 19.4% of its predicted annual footfall in just one month. In Newton Grange, visitor numbers at the nearby National Mining Museum surged. The Scottish Transport Appraisal Guidance, or STAG as it's known, is the method used to prioritise transport schemes. We had one in 2008 and another in 2015. In July 2016, the Network Rail Scotland route study was published. It made no reference to the Leave Mouth Rail Link. In December last year, Fife Council resubmitted the revised STAG report to Transport Scotland. Transport Scotland responded to Fife Council's technical review of the revised STAG on the 18th of July this year. So can I say to the Transport Minister that quite aside from any rail link application, this process is tiresome, it lacks transparency and I believe it is an antiquated approach to public engagement. Some of the issues raised by Transport Scotland included low passenger forecasts for Leavenmouth to Edinburgh. Presiding officer, can I gently suggest to Transport Scotland that it is rather difficult to estimate footfall on a rail line which has not existed since the 1960s. <laughs> Bluntly, there isn't a culture of travelling to the capital for work because there is no rail line. Compare Leaven then to Dunbar. 3% of the Leaven mouth population work in Edinburgh compared with 22% in Dunbar. The towns are a similar distance from Edinburgh. No prizes for guessing which has the rail link. Transport Scotland also raised concerns about the apparently limited personal and business responses to the public survey. And that is quite a quantitative look at data, so I like to do my homework and hear some qualitative feedback, which I've gathered prior to today's debate. Donaldson Timber say that they are sure that rail connectivity to the central belt and further afield would help with employment opportunities. Vlauder, the engineering firm, say we are in support of the proposed rail link. It would give us access to a wider pool of employees and the option of bringing materials in by rail. Transport Scotland claimed Diageo and their logistics provider WH Malcolm are the largest identified opportunity for rail freight. No evidence has been provided with regard to their current views and their likelihood to use such a facility. But WH Malcolm told my office today that they have a rail division. They say they are not adverse to switching from road to rail. Similarly, Diageo say that they would give serious consideration to the option of transporting materials via freight train the biggest employer in Leaven would naturally consider using freight. That sounds like pretty compelling evidence to me. Much like the borders, however, opening up the Leaven rail link wouldn't just be about driving investment and job creation. Jenny Certainly. Murder Fraser. I'm very grateful to Jenny O'Gorruth for giving way. On the question of uh, employment opportunities, would you recognise that in the Leaven area at present, there is a shortage of good quality employment opportunities for young people in particular? as a result of which too many have to leave the area. Would you agree with me that creating the, the rail link might help redress that situation and encourage more young people to stay in the area? Jenny Gilbreth. I thank Murder Fraser for that intervention. I would absolutely agree with what he has to say, and on that issue, I'll, I'll come to that uh, later in my speech. Um, much like the borders then, as I've just said, it's not just about, um, you know, opening up investment and job creation, it's about more than that, it's about tourism. Um, and when the rail line first opened in the 1960s, it helped Leaven to become a tourist destination. My granddad, who was from Springburn, uh, used to come on holiday to Leaven with his family up from Glasgow. And to the east of Leaven sits London Lynx, home of the oldest women's golf course in the world. And of course, Murdo Frader's uh, boss comes from that area as well. Beyond it, Lower Largo, the birthplace of Alexander Selkirk and the real inspiration behind Robinson Crusoe. Scotland's answer to Nelson, Sir Andrew Wood, came from Upper Largo. A Scottish sea captain, he went on to become the Lord High Admiral of Scotland. And what now of Fife's proud history? What of our vital contribution to the coal industry? 
transported from the metal docks not far from where the line would run. This unclean fuel helped to build the British Empire. But the hollow gap the industry's implosion left continues to scar Leavenmouth today. Since I was elected last May, we have lost jobs on the High Street at the Royal Bank, Clydesdale Bank, and just last weekend at WH Smith. On Saturday, I took a wander down the High Street. Nine shops closed, three charity shops, two bookies, and an arcade. One in three children in Leavenmouth live in poverty. For children growing up in my constituency, their opportunities are geographically curtailed. Isolated from transport links, their aspirations can only take them so far. I am extremely proud that the Scottish Government backed the new Leavenmouth Academy with £25 million of investment. The school which opened last year is a state-of-the-art building in partnership with Fife College. Here's what the head teacher, Ronnie Ross, had to say. I firmly believe, as do most of my staff and pupils, that the rail link is an essential ingredient to reviving the fortunes of Leavenmouth and also for enabling people to travel in and out of the area for work purposes. Presiding officer, as a constituency member for Leaven, I was extremely disappointed that the Edinburgh City Region deal made no provision for the Leavenmouth Rail Link. That was an opportunity for all levels of government to grasp. Instead, the deal has focused on the capital, to the detriment of the region as originally intended. As Edinburgh booms, Leavenmouth is beginning to contract. But there is an opportunity here. In his last correspondence to me on the matter of the Leavenmouth Rail Link, the Transport Minister states a new pipeline uh, system is now being proposed for rail enhancement projects. Presiding officer, Leavenmouth is not like other rail links. We have a well-established campaign group. We have cross-party support. We have a length of track just sitting there, ripe for development. And we've already been through two stag appraisals. So if there is to be a new approach, I will now shamelessly steal an idea given to me by Ross Bennett from the campaign group. Let us trial it. That is my first ask to the Transport Minister. My second is that he commit Network Rail to a GRIP4 study of the Leaven Rail Link. That's the Governance for Railway Investment Project. That is the only way we can arrive at a definitive business case. It will also help develop a single option for the line. My final ask, presiding officer, is that the Transport Minister comes to Leaven to walk the line. I might even cook him his tea if he's lucky. At the top of Leaven High Street, above what is today Leaven's library, is a symbol of the cooperative movement, a beehive. The image for the movement suggests united cooperation. One bee cannot survive on its own, but with others it can. To quote the great Jimmy Reid, whoever takes the important economic decisions in society ipso facto determines the social priorities of that society. The Leave and Rail Link has the potential to change lives in my constituency and beyond. It will bring jobs, it will bring investment, it will widen the horizons of the next generation. It just needs that green light from government. Presiding officer, can I take this opportunity to personally thank Eugene Clark, Alan Armstrong, Ken Haig, Ross Bennett, Mary Riley, Elizabeth Maguire and everyone who has been involved in the Leave and Mouth campaign group. Their resolute professional determination has kept the Leave and Mouth Rail Link alive to us politicians. I think it's high time we rewarded their tenacity and committed to getting Leaven back on track. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I call on Willie Rennie to be followed by Jamie Green. Willie Rennie. I want to thank Jenny Ruth for securing this member's debate this evening. I want to thank her in particular because it's important that we do have forceful all-party support. But I also want to caution her. I don't think Ruth Davidson has ever been Murdo Fraser's boss. <laughs> um, I also want to thank the Leavenmouth Railway campaigners for their energetic campaign to reinstate this very short line to Leaven from Glenrothes with Thornton. I do need to apologise to the Chamber, to the Minister, um, but also the people in the gallery, um, because I'm going to have to leave before the conclusion of this debate. I've got a speech to make at six o'clock at the university, um, so I'm going to have to leave early, so apologies for that. Um, yet this project is so important to Fife and my constituency that I wanted to mark my support with a small contribution. We've heard all the arguments. The largest town without a railway, significant area of deprivation, area of post-industrial decline, big businesses with a lot of HGV traffic, narrow access roads with heavy traffic. The environmental, social and economic benefits are pretty obvious. The studies have been carried out. The local support has been secured, as we've heard from Jenny Ruth, And local people, in fact, proactively raise it as an important priority. We don't have to encourage them to support the campaign. They're already there. Fife Council regards it as a priority and it's put its money behind that project too. The railway still exists. It's a short line. None of it has been built on already. The cost is not insignificant, but in comparison with other major projects, it's still quite small. 
the environmental, economic and social returns will be significant. But there is frustration with the process, that it takes too long, that the answer to any question is to commission a further report, a further study or a further investigation. And it's almost as if the decision has been put off for convenience. What we need is a bit of uh, speed in this process to try and deliver a project that everybody is behind. And what I hope is that through this debate, the Minister gets a feeling, an understanding of the strength of feeling in the community and from all parties too. I appreciate that he's got hard choices to make, but to govern is to choose. I hope that he chooses to confirm in the not too distant future that leave and mouth will happen and that trains will be running on that line within the next few years. Leave and mouth would be a sound investment and it has my support. I hope it has the ministers too. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate there's warm support in the gallery. I would just urge members to, you can show your support at the very end of the debate, perhaps by applauding at the very end of the debate. When you close. Jamie Green to be followed by David Torrance. Jamie Green. I, I won't be offended if you don't clap after my speech, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, presenting officer, I'd like to uh, thank uh, and congratulate Jenny Guru for bringing this to the chamber floor this evening. And I'd also like to pay that tribute to the uh, rail campaign for the work that they're doing to bring in this uh, local issue to the forefront of debate in the Scottish Parliament. I'm also uh, aware and reliably told that my local five Conservative group are in favour of the reinstatement of this line. As we look forward to consider how we improve Scotland's national railways, much of the discussion in this place is around the big ticket items and the connectivity between our main cities. It is very, very important that we consider the positive impact that small railway lines can have on local communities. Importantly, we should always remember at the heart of this debate is that railways are not just modes of transport. They are key parts of local, regional and indeed national economic development. They enhance trade, they encourage investment, they create jobs and prosperity in the process as well. Be better connectivity in Scotland will spur growth and help facilitate a collaborative economic environment between our cities, regions and towns. And that's why I do believe that there's a strong case for this. Now, I will admit that naturally I approach calls for new railway lines and links quite cautiously. Uh, these are substantially uh, expensive infrastructure investments. Uh, and as we all know, all governments uh, are tightening their purses. Now, often these campaigns... Uh, I'm happy to, yeah. John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. I'm grateful for the member taking that intervention. Does the member believe that there's the same restraint in calling for road building projects? Jamie Green. Uh, I, th I, think, I think any major infrastructure spend, whether it's a road, a railway line, uh, an airport, a bridge, uh, has to be uh, looked at on the merits of the advantages that that investment will bring to the communities that it serves at both ends of it. A road is no different to a, a rail line. In this instance, I think there's a very uh, obvious business case for this line which would merit the substantial investment that it clearly requires. I say substantial. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, we could argue that it's not. Um, as I said, I do approach these things naturally quite cautiously. Um, but you know, these campaigns are often, le often led by local people, and I'm very um, taken by the, uh, the uh, energy that's come out of the local campaign on this, and I'm pleased to participate in this debate. I think the estimated cost of around 80 million uh, would connect uh, Leaven, uh, Buckhaven and Methyl, as well as not just locally, but also improving access to the wider area, such as uh, Glenrothes, Fife, and even into the capital itself. There are around 50,000 people living in that catchment area who would benefit from this line. And I think it would also uh, present significant transport and connectivity improvements to any new house uh, build or business uh, um, expansion in that area as well. So for example, uh, I've heard that access to key industrial sites with freight would be provided. Now, we're all keen to get uh, uh, as much freight off the road and onto rails as we can. This is a perfect opportunity to do so. Um, I, I think also the STAG report, uh, which was published last year, uh, was it was last year, uh, recommended um, uh, this uh, project. I would like to quote from it because one thing struck me uh, specifically. The scheme has the potential to provide a step change in the economic performance of a large population area as well as helping to regenerate economic activity, 
this will provide a gateway to significantly boost tourism. And I think that's very important that we bear that in mind. It's not just about commuters, it's actually about encouraging uh, people from other parts of Scotland to Jenny Gorus area. Uh, it also uh, noted the potential to attract inwards investment uh, and support increased business activity in the area uh, with the net uh, cost benefit ratio to be around uh, 1.3. That sounds good to me from a business point of view. Uh, I'm aware that it also has uh, some uh, environmental repercussions. This could go to uh, uh, reduce CO2 emissions in the Fife area. Uh, and also uh, decrease levels of road congestion, which I think is something we all uh, want to do. So I think there is a business case for reinstating this link, but I think to move things forward, I think we do need to have a, a, an open conversation about the funding, about who's going to pay for it, how it's going to be paid for, and with these types of projects, it's very important that the scope is set out properly from day one. Uh, the, these projects often have a tendency to go over budget uh, due to um, poor um, scoping in the first place. So I think any cost analysis we do on the, the total cost of the project uh, should be um, quite succinct uh, so that the minister is able to make and take a view on this uh, with all the facts at hand. I am intrigued to find out perhaps in his, sta uh, his speech he may uh, give us some more rationale as to why it wasn't included in the Edinburgh City deal. I think there is general disappointment from uh, across the chamber. It's also been noted in the local press as well. So any comments you have on that would we welcome. I do wish Jenny Guru very well in her pursuit of this link. Uh, these benches are happy to be a constructive part of that dialogue and I look forward to uh, seeing some results. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call on David Torrance to be followed by Claire Baker. David Torrance. Thank you, President Officer. I would also like to congratulate Jenny Guru in securing this debate in Parliament today on one of the most pressing issues that affects both our constituencies. I'd also like to welcome members of the Leave Mouth Rail campaign and local councillors to the Parliament this evening. Railways have been an imperative and influential means of transport for people and materials for decades. Transport links have served as a symbol of modernisation since the beginning of human civilization. No other industry has promoted change on the scale and scope that is brought about by invention and adoption of railway. Transport has affected economic and social development from the beginning and continues to do so. That is why it is unacceptable that Leavenmouth is the largest urban area in Scotland, not directly served by rail. It is our job as influential policymakers to raise awareness of the 37,600 residents of Leavenmouth that continue to be disconnected from key areas in Scotland. The Leavenmouth Rail campaign has brought to our attention issues of economic, social and environmental inequality and is fundamentally a campaign based on the justice for the community. Based on the most recent statistics, Leavenmouth is within the top 20% of most deprived communities in Scotland, with several areas within the top 5%. This area's transport links have been neglected for years, yet it continues to show extreme potential for regeneration through investment in business and tourist development. In the last six years I have been involved with the Leavenmouth Rail campaign. Its members have to be congratulated for their enthusiasm and dedication for taking every opportunity to highlight the issue. There has not been a summer fair or gala in the area they have not attended. In addition to the many street stalls that have been held, which has resulted in the 12,500 residents from the area signing a petition that supports the reopening of the rail link from Thornton to Leaven, which was recently presented to Transport Minister Hamster Yusuf by Jenny Garufa and myself. It is evident that communities that accommodate themselves to transport connections typically prosper. Transport investment links factors of production together in the web of relationships between producers and consumers to promote efficiency and to provide the means to expand economies of scale and scope. As a Fife Council report on the Leave Mouth Sustainable Transport Study has proven, reducing the cost and time of passengers and freight movement is a great contrib contributor to economic growth. As one of the highest concentrations of deprivation in Fife, it is crucial to re revive the rail link to enhance employment opportunities for its struggling workforce as alternative transport modes are costly and inefficient. Alongside the economic benefits, the environmental benefits compared to cars are in line with Scotland's leading environmental role, modern railways. When managed strategically, have a significant environment and land use benefits, as they are usually more energy efficient than road transport and generally have lower emissions per traffic unit than any other mode. It is obvious that there is significant support to reinstate leave mouth rail It is one of the few issues during my long time in politics I have received cross-party support. And it is one of the issues in which the two main political parties of Fife Council have both fully supported to make it their number one transport priority. 
Therefore, I find Willie Rennan's comments in the local papers in the past few days attacking both the SNP and Labour administrations, the Fife Council, both extremely disappointing and unhelpful. It's just cheap, cheap political point scoring and has nothing positive to highlight advance or advance a case for reinstatement of Leave Mouth Rail Link. I will give way. Willie Rennie, did, did the member not find it rather odd that I received a letter from the Minister which directly contradicted what the Leader of the Council had said about the city region deal and that rather than arguing amongst themselves, it would be better to come together to take this project forward. Did he not find that rather confusing and therefore it needed some clarity and some unity? Um, I think if Willie Rennie had attended many of the meetings that I have attended over the last six years, he'd find whether it's MPs, whether it's MSPs, local councillors, leaders of the council, we have all come together to support um, the Leave Mouth Rail campaign. Um, and his comments in the paper just weren't helpful at all for our case. Um, I believe our next step is to develop a detailed reform programme and the Leave Mouth Sustainable Transport Study has done an excellent job in beginning this process. If we dis disregard this campaign, we also disregard our progress in economic activity, our progress as a leading country in reducing carbon emissions, and we disregard our dedication to serving the most deprived communities in Scotland. Leave Mouth and its wider communities are suffering the consequences and we need to raise awareness to help individuals and communities in Leavemouth who have been denied access to public space. In conclusion, President Officer, restatement of the Leavemouth Rail Link will help address the poor transport links within the area and will bring with it economic benefits. It also has the potential to make a significant impact on reducing the carbon footprint of businesses within the area. I'd like to thank everyone involved with the Leavemouth Rail Campaign for all their hard work because without them, we would not be here today debating this motion. I look forward to working with him in the future so that one day we can all travel on train to Leaven. Thank you very much. I call Claire Baker to be followed by Mark Ruskell. Uh, thank you, President Officer. It's a pleasure to speak in this evening's debate on the Leaven Rail Link. I would like to congratulate Jenny Gilruth for securing the debate and giving us the opportunity to put the case before the Minister. Uh, President Officer, it's nine years since I first spoke in a member's debate on the Leaven to Thornton Rail Link, and looking back on it, I'm actually the only MSP who spoke in that open debate who is still here in the chamber tonight to su further support the campaign. I would like to recognise the tenacity of the Leaven Mouth Rail Campaign Group, who are promoting their cause with a degree of rigour, good nature and energy that deserves recognition. They have held conferences, gathered signatures and produced sound evidence to support the campaign and I will highlight some of their arguments tonight. So nine years ago there was unanimous support around the chamber for the project but there was a fairly mild response from the then minister. I hope the minister this evening can give a stronger, more positive response to the debate. This is a campaign with political support in Fife. Since I've been elected to the Scottish Parliament, we've had an SNP-led council administration, a Labour administration, and now a coalition between the two, and they have been consistent in their support for the project. The timeline provided by Five Council to MSPs demonstrates the work they have undertaken to promote the reopening. Reopening of the line was in the Scottish Labour and the Scottish Green Party manifestos for the 2016 election, and I recognise the commitment from Five MSPs of all other parties. But it is not within the powers or the finances of the local authority or Fife MSPs to deliver this project. The economic, environmental and social benefits that the rail link can deliver are clear. It would expand employment, educational and economic opportunities for an area that would benefit so much from this investment. Reopening the line also offers opportunities for freight, adding further benefit to the proposal. I know the Leaving Mouth area well and we have seen investment along with the Fife Energy Park, the Hydrogen Office, the new Leaving Mouth Academy along with the commitment that was there from Fife College. There are many dedicated support organisations and the area still has the community spirit that was fostered in its history as a mining community. But it's still an area which lives with high deprivation areas, levels with higher than average unemployment, with health challenges and a low car ownership figure. The positive signal of intent that the reopening of this line would give to the area is difficult to underestimate. And it is a fairly straightforward proposal. Um, I accept there is a process to go through and that there must be clear evidence of benefits, affordability and a robust business case. But as others have said, there is a frustration around this process. We have had two stag reports, with the most recent being commissioned by Fife Council in 2015. I know Transport Scotland have a job to do, but there is a growing concern they are not making the stag process smooth or being clear in their expectations. 
There is now the need for a GRIP4 study, which is recognised as a complex and relatively expensive study. Is it proportionate for Fife Council to pay for this? We know the pressure that local authorities are under, and while they have invested in the STAG process and have budgeted for expenditure, they are now being expected to fund a GRIP study with no indication that the project is likely to be considered favourably or that it is a worthwhile undertaking. Political commitment from the Scottish Government is crucial in making the project a reality. The success of the Borders rail line should inspire confidence in future projects, where passenger numbers are considerably higher than predicted. There will always be an element of risk with these infrastructure projects, and we can never be fully guaranteed of the outcome. But I would argue the Leavenmouth Rail project is as good a project as the Scottish Government could wish for to deliver economic, social and environmental benefits to an area that needs it. Today, the Minister must demonstrate commitment to the project and he could start by committing to real support towards the GRIP study, which is the crucial next stage in making this campaign a reality. Thank you. Thank you. I call Mark Ruskell to be followed by Alexander Stewart. Mark Ruskell. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I thank Jenny Gilruth for bringing forward the motion tonight? It's very welcome. It's attracted a lot of cross-party support. I'm delighted to be able to speak in the debate. Um, now, I highlighted the case to reopen Levermouth Rail Link through a members' debate that I moved, I think, back in 2007. I think it was Tavish Scott then who uh, wound up for the government, uh, responded for the government. And it has been satisfying to see how the argument for reopening the line has evolved into a really compelling case over the last decade. And I think the quality of that case is reflected in Jenny Gilruth's motion, supported by all parties, and the Levermouth Rail campaign really deserve our thanks and congratulations for their very professional mm -hmm. and very passionate work, which in recent years has also been supported um, by Fife Council. And I think, you know, when the, the sight of the metal power station um, finally disappearing from the skyline and, and, and also the sight of the big demonstration wind turbine going up, really, for me, painted a picture of a, of a strong economic future for Levenmouth communities, building on the skills of the past to deliver the kind of world that we need for the future. But what's been missing from, from that picture um, all along has been a rail link that connects Levenmouth to the rest of Scotland. And, you know, this line has languished under weeds for decades, and yet it's vital for the regeneration of the area. And we've heard contributions already from members about the particular challenges that are faced by young people, the kind of grinding exclusion. And we've all heard stories from constituents about how difficult it's been to access the job market, how difficult it is to access educational opportunities, and even in some cases, health care as well. But I want to focus on what time I've got left, presiding officer, on, on the way forward and the process now for getting this line actually reopened. And I think, firstly, it's important to remember that, that this line already exists. It may lie mothballed, but there's a commitment that falls on network rail already to maintain the line. And if there was a request made from Diageo's freight operator for it to be used again, then Network Rail would have to open it within 12 months. And that would obviously make a significant contribution to the full upgrading required then for passenger services. So the Scottish Government need to be backing dialogue with Diageo and Malcolm Logistics on the freight question. But secondly, the, the, the STAG appraisal that was completed didn't count up the wider economic benefits that would flow from reopening the line. And if it had, then the cost-benefit ratio would have come in well ahead of the borders rail line. But the regeneration potential of this project is real and needs to be understood and factored into what will be a political decision for the Scottish Government on the passenger services rather than a decision for network rail on that particular question. Um, thirdly, I, I, would, I would add that the, the new pipeline approach to bringing forward rail projects and the move away from the sort of five-year control periods will clearly bring some flexibility for the government to back winning projects. But I do remain concerned about blockages in that pipeline. And if Levermouth is to move from the business case stage of the STAG process to the technical feasibility stage under the GRIP process, then that is going to require investment, Minister, including, for example, you know, even physical clearance work on the line itself to actually carry out that technical assessment. So, you know, other members have, have reflected on, you know, where is that investment going to come from if it's not written into the Edinburgh City Region deal, if it's not within the capacity of Fife Council's budgets to deliver it on its own. You know, there must be a role here for the Scottish Government to marshal the resources that are needed and help to move this project down the pipe. 
Lastly, presiding officer, there is a need for coordination between proposals to reopen rail lines and stations and the wider needs of the rail network. I, I appreciate that. And of course, Levermouth is not the only reopening that Fife needs, and the completion of the Queen's Free Crossing should now absolutely signal increased investment in public transport in Fife rather than less investment. Um, there are questions around the time scale of proposed projects in Fife, but there's also the opportunity for synergy between them and a much need needed rail renaissance in Fife and across Scotland if the government can prioritise capital budgets for infrastructure. So the prize for communities, the economy and the environment is great, but it does need the political will and vision to turn this into a reality, and we look to you, Minister, to provide that. Thank you very much, and I call Alexander Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I am delighted to have the opportunity this evening to participate in this debate and pay tribute uh, to Jenny Goldruth for bringing this debate uh, this evening to the Chamber. This area, as already has been mentioned, is currently the largest urban area of Scotland, which isn't directly served by the rail, despite the presence of the mothballed original line between Thornton and the East Coast Main Line and the historic stations of Cameron Bridge and Leven, a distance of only five miles as far as the crow flies. As we know, there is currently a very strong campaign which is seeking to raise awareness and apply pressure from the local community. And I pay tribute to that local community, uh, presiding officer, for their strength of feeling, uh, their commitment, their dedication, and their enthusiasm to ensure that this has been further moved up the agenda. I've only been uh, a member in here since last May, but I am well aware of the campaign that's taken place prior to me coming to this uh, chamber. Uh, and as I say, I pay tribute to them. The commercial uh, requirements, the logistical common sense, and the ultimate justice uh, for the reconnection of this neglected community uh, is, is paramount. Uh, it will help the economy, it will help investment, it will secure jobs, and it will give youngsters the opportunity to move freely uh, around the area. The area desperately needs uh, a robust uh, uh, reinforcement uh, to ensure that the, the, the society and the opportunities that are there are given that, because they do have poor connections, uh, and people have to suffer on a day-to-day -day basis with these poor connections. Better freight links and rail will certainly aid motorists and the relocation of the heavy uh, traffic that takes place at present uh, and giving passengers an opportunity. Presiding officer, it's like looking back and turning back the clock. 170 years ago, uh, there was a, a similar situation in the area. Uh, in 1847, the Edinburgh and Northern Railway opened part of its main line uh, station mm -hmm. at Mark Inch. And in 1848, the station at Thornton opened, with immediate emphasis to the people of Leven the magnitude of the railway connections that are taking place within that community. Uh, we find ourselves uh, today looking at uh, where the acknowledgement of the poor road connections that we have and, you know, the, the HDV movement that's going back and forward from Diageo and others within that location, if that was taken off the road, what connections that would make, what opportunities that would give to ensure uh, that we have a much better uh, logistical connections within the area. Presiding officer, it is time for the Scottish Government to sit up and listen to the locals they cannot just ignore the depth of feeling. Uh, and as I say, I am sincerely am impressed by the, the reports that have come forward, uh, the events I've attended over the last uh, year and a bit uh, to see the, the commitment from this community. The strong commercial case, the common sense uh, for the, the determination of the locals to campaign, as well as a clear business sense prevails to, to ensure that this Levenmouth Rail Link succeeds. They deserve to succeed because they have put their effort into it. If I believe, you know, the connections are poor, but the government has to put its money where its mouth is in supporting the business community and supporting the local residents. That is vitally important. Uh, and I've heard this evening that, you know, we've been years at this campaign, uh, that, that we've taken a lot of effort. We've seen lots of reports coming forward, but not much progress. And that has not been uh, because... MSPs have not participated because I can see from past that they have. It just hasn't materialised. I therefore ask the government to support this proposal, which will unlock the potential and give real opportunities to communities across the Fife area. You know, I, I, I am happy to fight the corner and stand shoulder to shoulder with MSPs across this chamber to fight to ensure that the people of Leavenworth are given the opportunities that they deserve. 
They have fought long and hard, uh, and I am, as I say, immensely impressed. But it's up to Network Rail, it's up to Transport Scotland, and it's up to the Scottish Government to stand together as well to ensure that this community is respected and given the opportunities that they rightfully deserve. So, Presiding Officer, I wish the campaign well, and I hope that in the tenure of my term here uh, that we can work together to ensure that this dream becomes a reality for the people and the communities that deserve it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I now call on the Minister, Hamza Youssef, to wind up and to conclude the debate. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. I commend, uh, of course, Jenny Gilruth for bringing this uh, and securing this debate to the Parliamentary Chamber. I thank the members for their contributions. I'll try to address some of the issues, concerns uh, that have been raised in their contributions. But, of course, if I miss anything out, I uh, welcome uh, the, the, any interventions uh, that they may want to make. Um, can I also thank, as many members have done, uh, the Leave and Mouth Rail campaigners, uh, many of them who are in the public gallery, not all 12,500 who signed uh, the petition, I suspect, but uh, a fair number of those who have driven uh, the campaign, who I've met on a number of occasions, most recently when I did collect that petition uh, from, uh, from, from Jenny uh, Gilruth, David Torrance and, and a number of other MSPs who were there uh, as well. Uh, as I say, over 12,500 signatures, uh, presiding uh, officer. Uh, we've collected petitions uh, on many uh, different uh, issues. All of us, I'm sure, uh, 12,500 is a mightily impressive figure, particularly when I think of uh, the popular, see the figures of the population of the Leaving Mouth area. Uh, you're talking about uh, one third of the entire population uh, of, that, uh, of that area. So very, very impressive. Uh, indeed, so can I thank and congratulate and commend uh, Leave and Mouth Rail uh, campaigners. Can I also say from personal experience, whoever does their Twitter account, uh, they are persistent and I salute their indefatigability uh, in that uh, regard. Somehow anything I tweet about manages to always come back uh, to the Leave and Mouth uh, Rail campaign. Um, presiding officer, uh, I can advise um, Jerry Gilruth and others who have passionately articulated the case uh, today's, debate, that today's debate has been really helpful and informative and has been the opportunity for me to hear and reflect on the issues, the, the observations and concerns uh, that have been raised. And uh, with due reflection, I intend to perhaps uh, flow a proposition on how we might address uh, some of the needs of the community uh, at Leave and Mouth. But perhaps before I do, let me just try to set out some of the assessments uh, of, of the issue. First thing is first that nobody... Uh, be it the government, be it Transport Scotland, I, don't, I think I can speak even perhaps for Network Rail uh, on this position, that nobody has ever doubted the passion, the commitment, uh, the desire and the depth of feeling, I think, as Alexander Stewart described it, uh, of those who live uh, in Leavenmouth uh, and indeed the surrounding area uh, for their desire to have this rail link uh, up and running. That simply uh, has never been uh, in doubt uh, whatsoever. Uh, He's right, and uh, members were right to say that there's been a number of studies, so I can understand the frustration. Uh, I can also understand, in some respects, the frustration around the stag process. Uh, Jenny Ruth and others are not the only ones to have raised this with me. I am uh, speaking to my, my officials at Transport Scotland to look at the stag process in general, not just for rail projects, but indeed a number of our infrastructure uh, projects. Uh, that being said, uh, within the guidelines, they'll know from the study, which, which I have a copy of, of course, that two potential uh, transport options emerge. You know, the bus option emerges, and, and then the rail link option, which is obviously favoured uh, by uh, the, the majority. Um, it also goes to say to provide context, which I know is really important, and Jamie Green, uh, I thought, reflected on this very well in his contribution, that, of course, the government rightly will be held to account for every single penny of taxpayers' money that we spend. And therefore, there has to be a, an absolute robust business case, robust rationale, uh, that has to be scrutinised to the nth degree. So finding that balance between not frustrating the process and yet going through the due diligence is sometimes a difficult one. Uh, and I'm not saying you know, we get it right uh, every time, but most certainly uh, I can hear what members are saying uh, very much on that. And uh, when it comes to the, the cost-benefit ratio, which again I think uh, Jamie uh, Green uh, mentioned, uh, the the, the, the cost-benefit ratio, if we looked at this as purely value for just the, the pound that is invested, um, there's still some work for the study to, to, to do in that regard in terms of the railing. But what I would say on the flip side of that, and I think it's a point that all members, and, and Jenny Ruth was very strong on this point in her remarks, was that if you just look at this from a business case point of view, 
you're perhaps ignoring the regeneration impact, the social economic impact, and so on and so forth. And I think those points are very well made, um, uh, very well made by uh, all of those uh, who, who uh, contributed to the debate. But it's also a point that's made very, very well uh, in the recent booklet uh, produced by Leave the Mouth Whale campaign, which I read uh, yesterday and again uh, just this afternoon before coming to the debate. It is a really helpful contribution. If members haven't seen it, they should see the latest booklet. I'm sure they all have uh, the latest booklet from the Leave and Mouth uh, Rail campaign. It illustrates how improved connectivity can make a real difference to the lives and the opportunities of people in Leave and Mouth. Uh, the booklet also raises points which need to be explored uh, further relating to the level of costs uh, and the identification uh, of the achievements uh, of, uh, of benefits. It is for all of those reasons uh, and the reasons around uh, uh, that uh, Claire Baker touched upon, I think one or two other members touched upon about the grip process, the, uh, uh, perhaps the financial burden, I think, as it was described on, on the local authority, that um, I'm minded, uh, subject to agreement with Fife Council, I should say, that uh, I will instruct my officials at Transport Scotland to effectively take on responsibility for this study uh, in close collaboration, of course, with the council, but as opposed to the council leading, uh, perhaps uh, I can make... Uh, uh, I can make a proposition that uh, Transport Scotland uh, lead uh, on that because the, the, the evidential base uh, is something that is absolutely important, absolutely imperative when we go to spend uh, a penny of taxpayers' money. Now, I, I'm not going to prejudge what the outcome will be of Transport Scotland's deliberations. I have told them that they must look above and beyond just the basic uh, cost, uh, cost benefit to, to wider socioeconomic impacts, regeneration impacts, some of the qualitative information uh, that Jenny Garuth uh, has, uh, has articulated, that would also be helpful uh, and useful if you can present me with that. I should say, uh, that being said, uh, I still expect Transport Scotland to be absolutely robust in the scrutiny uh, of this uh, project. So, uh, with that uh, uh, in mind, uh, President Officer, uh, I will re-engage, of course, with the members uh, who have taken an interest. I'll re-engage with the Leave and Mouth uh, Rail campaign. Uh, but importantly, I'll also re-engage with Fife Council. I think one or two members asked about the city deal uh, issue uh, as well. Um, as they will know, uh, it really would be for, for local authorities to come forward with what their priorities are uh, in terms of city deal uh, projects. Um, but, uh, you know, there is an opportunity, as, as Mark Ruskell touched upon, with the pipeline approach um, for control period uh, 6th, 2019 to 2024 control period, there is an opportunity subject to, to funding from the UK government. We still haven't uh, got that confirmed yet. That's a, a to and fro that's happening with the Chief Secretary of the Treasury. But notwithstanding that, uh, taking on the points that Mark Ruskell has said about that possible blockage in a pipeline, uh, the whole point, I hope, of the pipeline is to remain flexible to allow projects that have a robust business case, a robust case in terms of socio-economic advantages uh, to, 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 to make their way through that pipeline. Uh, Leaving Mouth, uh, the tagline for Leaving Mouth Rail campaign is, is uh, quote-unquote, uh, more than just a transport project. And I think that's a great tagline, I have to say, incidentally, for any transport investment, uh, because uh, what we do is we seek to, to make investments uh, that strive to deliver you know, economically vibrant, well-connected uh, and inclusive societies uh, across Scotland. So on that note, uh, presiding Officer, I thank uh, Jenny Goldruth for initiating the debate. Uh, I thank the Leaving Mouth Real campaigners. I thank all members for their contributions. Uh, I think we've got potentially uh, a way forward on this. I hear what they're saying uh, very loudly, very clearly, and I promise to keep them uh, updated on any further developments. Thank you very much. Thank you. I thank the Minister and all members for the contributions. That concludes our debate. I thank our visitors in the gallery too. And I now close this meeting. <laughs>